AQA, A-level physics, astrophysics topic, radio telescopes. This is the third uh, video about telescopes, radio telescopes. So this is what the specification says. You can have a little read of that if you want. Let's dive in. So now optical telescopes, obviously visible light, but all the stuff in the sky in the cosmos emits an awful lot more than just visible light and, and you can learn an awful lot about stars and galaxies and even planets by looking at other wavelengths now obviously these are what we call false color images you can't see radio but a computer has changed this information into something that we can see there are radio telescopes, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, uh, gamma rays. You know, all this stuff is very useful information, uh, particularly if you want to know about temperature, then obviously infrared is going to give you a lot of information about that. Uh, the pictures at the bottom are from a satellite called SOHO, which is the Solar Helioscopic Observatory, which is looking at the sun. I suggest you look at the website because it's fantastic. So SOHO, S-O-H-O. So an awful lot can be learnt about things in the sky by using non-visible wavelengths. Now, a uh, bit of a problem though, is that looking at this graph, not all of these types of electromagnetic waves can get through the Earth's atmosphere very easily. In fact, uh, an awful lot of them are absorbed. Looking at this graph, you should see that visible light can get through, uh, radio waves can get through, uh, but things like X-rays can't. Some ultraviolet can get through, but not a lot. Enough to give you a suntan, but not a lot of ultraviolet. A lot of microwaves are absorbed, infrared is absorbed by water in the atmosphere. So only visible and radio waves pass through the Earth's atmosphere easily. So on Earth, Earth-based telescopes, uh, which use other wavelengths, are usually at high altitudes. Um, the photograph on the left there is in Chile, a big observatory in Chile, which is on top of a mountain. And then there's less atmosphere above you uh, and there's less moisture in the atmosphere. Space telescopes, there's the um, uh, famously the Hubble telescope, the James Webb telescope and lots of other spritzers and things and microwave observatories in space. Obviously problems with that if anything goes wrong it's a lot not very easy to fix it but space telescopes above the atmosphere don't have this problem. Resolving power. We're going to talk a lot about this in the next video, but we need to mention it now. You'll see why in a bit. What is resolving power? It's your ability to distinguish between two points of light, to tell two points of light apart. If you look at two light bulbs far away, do you see two light bulbs or do they blur into each other and you only see one? And so, uh, the resolving power of an optical instrument is its ability to resolve between two points of light. Uh, looking at this pictures of the same galaxy, and you'll see that the resolving power is getting better and better. Now, what does resolving power depend on? It depends on two things. It, the resolving power of a telescope depends on the size of the aperture. The aperture is the hole at the front. Uh, it's usually, if you're talking a refracting telescope, it's the, the size of the objective lens, the big lens at the front, okay? The size of the aperture. Uh, it also depends on the wavelength of the radiation. Basically, a large aperture means good resolving power. Uh, a large wavelength means poor resolving power. So basically you get the best resolving power if you've got a large aperture and you're using a small wavelength. Now this is a radio telescope. 
Uh, notice, if you've been watching the other videos, it's a Cassegrain design. So you've got a parabolic reflector. I don't think we can call it a mirror. It's a reflector. You've got a secondary reflector on this tripod thing. And then the antenna, which actually picks up the signal, is behind the main dish. So in some way similar to a reflecting telescope. Now, why are they big? Why are radio telescopes big? Well, it has a large aperture. Uh, and that means that it collects as much radiation as possible. Uh, and also, that's called the collecting power, by the way, collects lots of radiation. Some of the stuff they look at is kind of, you know, very, very, very far away, distant galaxies. And so the, we don't actually receive that much radiation on Earth from them. So you need a large aperture as possible. That gives you a good resolving power, or it maximizes the resolving power. And also, because radio waves have a large wavelength, the resolving power is going to be rubbish. In fact, it would be useless unless you had a very, very large aperture. So this is why radio telescopes need to be big. Now, one clever thing about radio telescopes is that you can link them together. Uh, this is the VLA in New Mexico, in America, the Very Large Array, uh, and it's 27 different radio telescopes all linked together. Um, each one is very big, 25 meters in diameter, and when they are linked together, the total collecting area, 13,250 meters squared. That's massive. Okay, so... Uh, one advantage of radio telescopes, you can link the signals together and effectively have a very, very large collecting power.